I gather that that song that you sang for them, Life is a Highway, and that we've heard once or twice ourselves too, um, was inspired by a trip to Africa long ago. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, I was physically exhausted, mentally, spiritually, you know, burned out a little bit. And, you, you, you know, as a songwriter, I think one of the things you do, and we've talked about that, you know, it's, it's therapy. It's therapy for other people. But I think initially it's got to be therapy for yourself. And so I wrote the song as a response to that, the, the idea that we can't change the world all by ourselves and in one foul swoop. So people shouldn't feel guilty about that. You do whatever you can. And so I'm not here to be a master of guilt and, and lay that out. It, you know, we all do what we can. And the song really talks about that. You know, I think that you, you, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, world poverty or, or third world poverty and, and or racism or intolerance or <clears throat> just you know your boss getting pissed off at you and you taking it out on other people that has the ripple effect you know people you know will, will take that and, and and maybe that'll cause more anger and more uh, dissension in the world more suffering but I think as it, life's a highway is basically talking about you keep your eyes on the road ahead of you you do whatever good you can and then that causes the ripple effect and spreads out from there you know and I wrote the song I felt better about myself and about things so it was it was like self therapy it was th therapeutic and and obviously it helped a lot of other people because the song still keeps on ticking. It's it like the tail wagging the dog, yeah. you know, that song. It's, one of those, it's got a life of its own. You obviously get a <laughs> lot, um, obviously, artistic inspiration. I know that's not the sole reason that you go, but you keep going back. You've just come back from, Af from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a few photos of that. Can you tell us a little bit about this past experience? Well, that, that p particular performance was just outside Nyamata, and that was a very powerful um, first day for us that was I think the, the third fourth day we were there but that's where we saw one of the churches where where thousands of people were slaughtered so of course everybody knows about the genocide I still I'm more more confused after being there as to how it could happen because the people just seem incredible and and, and gentle and <clears throat> Kilgali is one of the safest cities in Africa if you can believe that mm -hmm. but we saw a lot of really good things. We saw a lot of great stories. These are child-headed households, and we saw a lot of kids being sponsored by World Vision. We saw a lot of anti-retroviral drugs getting you to people who needed. You saw some success stories. A lot of success stories. We saw a village where World Vision was very active. They built 40 houses, and a lot of those were were widows that had full-blown AIDS or HIV, but were getting medication, and they had two or three kids in most cases, uh, more in some. And we, so we saw that. We saw the gift catalog at work. And for people that don't know about that, around Christmas, World Vision, it's one of the very successful uh, fundraisers where you, you can give a goat to, to somebody who's got everything and, uh, and chickens or, or medical somebody supplies. Somebody over here who village. has everything. Exactly. You give them a goat, yeah. which means you're paying um, yeah. on their behalf for a goat to be delivered Absolutely. to Absolutely. And so you get a card to give them, and, and you, you, you know where the money is going, you know which village it's going to. and, and uh, so I think that's a very good plan. We saw a lot of results of that and how effective that was for, <clears throat> you know, we saw one woman in, in a village. You know, it's a very hilly region as you get into the north and farther north towards Uganda, you get up into the gorilla country, the Fosse country, you know, we call it. Um, you know, Diane Fosse. Yeah, so it's a, that's a big part of their tourism. They, they bring people up there. So, but very, very hilly, very tough to get to this one village. We saw one woman and she was incredible. She was a matriarch of this this village and, and through the one goat that she received through World Vision it led to two or three goats she finally got a goat that she sired other goats with so she had a small little business going World Vision had briefed her on how to do composting and and all this sort of thing so she was educating a lot of the village to these things and she was feeding a lot of the kids that were malnourished through the goat's milk as well so I mean we saw that's sort of the result you know the whole thing is sustainable development and it's something that people have heard a lot about and they're going to hear more about and that's what they want to do this band-aid solution doesn't work you know where you throw money at the problem and and we talk about that and you hear that's one of the arguments against world relief is they say well we're just gonna to have to give more money a year down the line it doesn't get any better but it does get better and we see results of it getting better where uh, micro enterprise for instance where World Vision gives small loans and tests it's it's infinitesimal amount of money we saw women basket weaving which is a big craft in, in Rwanda they're known for their basket weaving and they started a business for six hundred dollars and they pay back the loan and the payback rate on these loans is phenomenal it's ninety nine percent and no interest of course and so that that way you get people to be self-sufficient and get back on your feet so it's we saw some really effective things going on and 
just to get back to this whole idea, everybody says that Africa had, you know, back, if you go back to the 50s, Stephen Lewis has said, there is very little extreme poverty. So the whole idea that <clears throat> they've always been poor, they've always been mired in extreme poverty, it's just not true. This, this is a it's fairly, a fairly recent development. Mm -hmm. And I just find that, that, that Africans in general from country to country are just the most generous people with their, their, you know, it just seems like the poorer they are, the more generous they are. They're just wonderful people uh, from country to country. And of course, every country is slightly different. And, different tribes and that, but people basically are the same. We draw from the same palette of needs and emotions and desires, you know, and, and so it's it's been a, a powerful experience. I feel like my, my grandmother was from Umtata, South Africa, so I have some oh. South African blood. She was a Matthews, so she was English South African. So I feel a certain ancestral... Matthews? Are you As a matter of fact, they're from, the same, they're from the same area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, but she looked a lot like she had the kind of dark guys like he did. She was quite quite swarthy woman, but yeah, so she looked a bit like Dave Matthews, so I don't know. I haven't done that. <laughs> Genealogy. Yeah. But same same town, same relative area. Yeah. It's amazing talking to you. You are a lot, you're the first person I've talked to who's, who's immersed themselves in any way in the, the crisis, the crises plaguing the continent of Africa, um, who has any sense of hope. I mean, you're very Relatively speaking, you're pretty positive, you're pretty encouraging. Do you think that's because you've aligned yourself with an organization you believe in and you've taken part in seeing some of these solutions put into place? Because I think yeah. a lot of people here, Absolutely. that we are all intrigued and devastated and you know can weep at the, over the Sunday yeah. papers at the, at the tragedies in Africa and, and in lots of other mm -hmm. places, but in Africa in particular, it feels so far away and we just don't know what to do. Yeah. And so it can feel hopeless. <clears throat> How do you maintain your hopefulness? Right from the first trip that we ever took, we said, we want to tell some good stories. People are tired of, of seeing Africans uh, in infomercials as being almost two-dimensional cutouts. You know, it, it, it's dehumanizing. I, I think uh, Oprah mentioned the same thing when she went to Zambia. Um, is that you know and we have to show some of the good as well some of the because it's not all bad mm. over there and there are some strong you know cultural stories to tell and that are fascinating you know um, some great music being made you know and and so that always intrigues me and, and so but as well as some of the good stories about development people have to hear some of those good stories they have to hear some of the good stories about world relief um, I think it's up to Stephen Lewis and and people with with that kind of a prominent voice, perhaps a more political voice, I think he has to keep the pressure on. You don't want people to walk away and go, Phew, that's well, taken care good. of. It's all fine. Yeah, because it's not. It, it is an ongoing thing and it is something that we have impacted as well through global warming. The Sahel, we know that the Sahel is getting smaller. In other words, that buffer zone between uh, tropical Africa and the Saharan Desert, it's gotten smaller and that's caused a great deal of suffering. That's one of the early evidences of global warming. Um, and misuse of, of the, the, you know, the environment and the climate and that. And we have to collectively take a certain amount of responsibility for that in the West, you know. So what do you, <clears throat> you know, just to give you the last word on, on passing along some of that hope and, the, and, and that um, participation in the solution that you've been able to do by actually going there, what would you say to people who, who aren't going to hop on a plane tomorrow and be part of, a, of yeah. a mission to Rwanda? What can we do? What should we do? Well, you know, a lot of kids are going over there. You know, there's a lot of different organizations that do sponsor that. And, and uh, so if you can get over there, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, um, if you're young and you're out of university or going into university, you know, maybe, you know, take the time, get over there. I mean, I guess it's become, uh, you know, the, the cynics have called it the designer continent now because you've got people like George Clooney have been there and, and Madonna now. And, and <clears throat> Brad, yeah. And, I, and, and is that a negative? I don't think it's a negative. I think it's about time. So I think it's a good thing. So if you can do that, do it. Um, I'm amazed how aware kids are of the, of the problems over there <laughs> these days. That's a good thing because the, the planet is shrinking, you know. Um, in a sense, you know, in a metaphoric yep. sense, mm -hmm. as, as well as, you know, we mentioned global warming. But I just think you do what you can. You know, if you, if you can't afford to do anything, then, then you can't do it. But, you know, a couple of bucks a month is not going to kill anybody, but somebody may die over there mm -hmm. without yeah. it. So, you know, I've seen that firsthand. Um, you said that 
you know, and I've gotten that feedback from so many people, celebrities as well, that say, geez, I don't know if I could handle it. I think you'd do really well over there. I think you, you should, if you get a chance, take a trip and try to uh, enlighten people as to what's going on, the good as well as the bad. Yeah. You know, again, we have to see some good stories. Thanks for inspiring us. Let's, uh, you got lots of good stories. It's good to hear them. It's good to see you again. Yeah, Thanks for coming you. to the show in Winnipeg. Oh, it was, it was great. Yeah, I ran into Tom Carkin in Winnipeg. That was a surprise treat for my cold weekend there. Thank you so much for being here, Tom. Hey, my Always pleasure. love to hear about what you're up to. My pleasure.